so you don't have any lights. How do you get a great shot? In this Syrup Quick Tip, we shoot a video portrait, making the most of natural light, covering the full process from plan to grade. As social media has evolved to be more video first, magazines, blogs, and publishers are trying out new things like video portraits, capturing the movement and life of a subject in ways that were previously uncommon. So how do we shoot them? Most creators start with just natural light, and that makes sense. Lights are an expense. But there are definitely some tricks to maximizing your location, getting great light on your subject, and just making great shots. So today we're gonna head to the coast with the Sony FX3 and capture a video portrait. We booked our crew and pulled together some inspiration, but more on that later. When we're shooting video portraits, it's all about personality. We're trying to create a connection between the subject and the audience. Now location is going to play a big part in this. We scouted Fatapu last night and made note of some of the locations we like and sort of where the sun is setting across the environment, where we think it's going to look good on the subject and where they're going to sit well in context. While a recce isn't always possible, it's a good idea if you can make the time. We also made sure to note the lighting conditions and key times so we can form a rough idea of what order and direction we want to be shooting in. That way we can sort of prioritize our shoots today and make sure we get everything in the very short golden hour we have. We're going to start with shooting a wide while the light's still up and it's catching the hills because it's going to show the best of the location. When framing up this shot, we need to make the most of the light as the sun is setting behind us. It hasn't ducked beneath the dunes yet, so we're getting quite a bit of direct golden light that we need to take into consideration when orienting the model. Nothing is a hard and fast rule, but as you rotate the model around more, light will wrap around the face. We're just experimenting here to find the point where we accentuate her features and she looks her best. So I really like the setup we have of this wide with um, the chair and the pool giving us some nice reflections of the mountains. So we're gonna go track everything on the gimbal, get a couple of shots really quickly because the chair is starting to sink. We're shooting this whole portrait at 100 frames a second for a couple of reasons. Primarily, when it's slowed, it gives this dreamy, introspective feeling. However, it also means all our shots are smoothed by a factor of four. Combining this with a gimbal to counteract a bit of the walking movement and you have some buttery smooth shots. The time is about 6.50 at this point. The light, the sun's getting pretty low in the sky, so it's really just a game of trying to bank all the shots before the sun goes down. Thankfully, we're shooting with some pretty fast lenses. These go down to 1.4, so we should actually be able to shoot for another half an hour, hopefully. The sun finally dropped to the perfect point as we started to hit blue hour. So we popped the FX3 back onto the gimbal and gimboom, and I got some walking shots that will bring a little momentum to the edit. Good vibes, good sunset, a little bit more cloud than we'd have liked, but um, at least it's pink and it looks pretty. It does look pretty, yeah. You can't, can't really lose on a beach like this. Although we really could shoot a tiny bit more. Cool, let's wrap team. So that was a really bad call. In the hustle of everything and trying to get everyone off the beach before it got too dark, I didn't realize we started shooting an hour earlier than we did with the recce. We should have bumped the ISO and kept shooting for another half an hour because looking back at those shots, those last ones are the ones we're gonna use. But hey, that's a good lesson for shooting outdoors. No matter how much prep you do, sometimes things just don't go to plan. Anyway, it's time to get recharged, repacked, and head out into the city. We're down in downtown today to shoot the second half of this video. So this is going to be a great contrast to yesterday we were out at the beach. Just the urban environment and lots of movement. It's pretty grey and overcast, so while it's a 50-50 chance we'll get a great sunset, at least we'll have nice diffuse light for the evening. We framed up our first location looking for leading lines down the main road. This gave us an opportunity to shoot when the cross lights went green for about 45 seconds a pop. It does pay to have a spotter. We, we have a multitasking makeup artist and light watcher. Yep. Don't be dumb. With each of these shots, um, we're trying to get a wide, a middle, and then a couple of details and closes. And this is going to allow us to get a little bit more of that pace in the cut. So when we're shooting video portraits, we want to give our model a context of why they exist in this space. This just gives us another action so our model isn't constantly posing or turning around and looking back at the camera. So today we're going to give our model a vintage camera, so she's walking around the city taking photos. So we found this cool little laneway while we're walking down Queen Street and it looks pretty nice, I like the environment, but the lighting is a little bit too flat on our model's face. So we're going to chuck in a bit of negative on the left hand side. Like camera right probably, just, just to complement the light, because the sun's coming in from camera left, so just to complement the lighting that's already here. So when we popped the negative in, it wasn't doing as much as we hoped for, but never fear, we can always put the bounce in on the opposite side and that's still going to create some contrast and pop her off the background. A large scrim is definitely a luxury. 
On run and gun shoots, you can normally get away with a small pop-up reflector that has a bounce and diffusion. But when we have the luxury, we'll use it. Something like this Manfrotto scrim just presses together and clips onto the frame. Once again, the sun was setting really fast, so we moved to our final location on the wall. So it's looking absolutely gorgeous. We're not gonna make the same mistake as last time, and we're gonna keep shooting until the sun completely sets, get all of that nice pink and blue light. You can just see how crazy the sun has gone right now, so we're just hustling to get all these shots banked. Um, this light will only last for a few minutes. It just keeps getting more red. I don't know how it's physically possible. To finish off, we're getting shots that have a good amount of energy as everything will be slowed down and changing up our posing to work with the environment. There are some neat details lower to the ground that we want to emphasize, so we're going to play with the level of our model. We're making sure we angle around and capture as much of the light as we can on her face because the light is dropping really, really quickly. Um, it looks real good when you swing around and you get a bit of that so you're just kind of in yeah. the back of the yeah. light. Looks like the light's done. I think we're out for the night. I know, we just better be kicked out by security as well, so time to hustle. With everything shot, we headed back to the studio to record a VO for our video portrait. We're wanting to complement the visuals with a short narrative that makes the audience feel like they know Elena and are getting an insight into her world. With my choice, you have a couple of options. A on-camera shotgun like the Weber Pro would be the easiest, but it's much better suited to vlogging or on-location sound. This is mostly due to its feature set and form factor, which is built for shooting run and gun, rather than in a super controlled studio environment. Instead, for VO in the sound room, we've set up an Audix A131. It's a cardioid condenser with a wide diaphragm, which has a pretty neutral frequency response. In short, this means we can get a really rich but natural sounding voice once mixed. You can hear the difference between this, and this microphone. Different mics suit different contexts, so it's best practice to choose the right one for the situation. We'll be doing a few takes in our sound-treated booth that removes almost all reverb and reflections. If you want to see how we built it, let us know in the comments. Maybe we'll have to make an episode of Film Builds on it. With the edit done, it's time for me to take over and polish it in the grade. So we shot this project on the FX3 in the color space S-Log3 S Gamut 3 Cine. This gives us the full 15 stops of dynamic range to play with and provides the maximum flexibility in post. We're going to be using Resolve today, although you can do all of these steps in any editor of your choice. When processing log footage, you first need to do a color space conversion. In Premiere, you can use a LUT, but in Resolve, I'll do a color space transform. While it's tempting to just add contrast and saturation to the footage, this won't work correctly and it'll cause you more problems down the line. This is especially important when working with skin tones as it's really easy to accidentally make them look unnatural. We shot this all at sunset, so the colors change significantly throughout the duration of filming, from golden yellows to more pinks and blues. With some basic color correction, just adjusting the exposure, temperature and contrast, I'm able to bring these shots together and make them feel like they were all shot at the same time. I'll now add some secondary corrections using power windows, targeting specific objects within the frame. This can be achieved by adding a power window, tracking the subject, and then adjusting the exposure. With the footage flowing nicely, it's time to add the grade. Early in the project, we collected some look references. As you can see, we're going for a kind of faded film look. And we're gonna do this by grading in a way that complements the original footage rather than creating something new. Now it's really important to note that we do not want this grade to be overpowering. We want to leave the model's skin tones alone so that they look as natural as possible. First I'm gonna add a color warper to constrain and simplify all the hues in the image. I'm gonna leave the model's skin tones alone, but pull all the other colors towards one hue. By warping all the hues to a smaller band of values, we're creating a simplified complementary color scheme. This emulates what some film stocks do to an image. A classic to the style is the lifted and clamped blacks. This gives the footage a faded feel. Now, as we're shooting on the FX3 and Sony lenses, they give a very clean and crisp image that's pretty impressive. However, as we're trying to emulate an old school feel, I'm gonna add some glow and diffusion to the footage to kind of soften it and make it feel like it was shot through some old school glass. To finish it all off, I'm just gonna add some film grain as this seems to work stylistically. If you want to try this look out on your own footage, we've made a few free LUTs that let you apply this grade quickly. Head over to the blog linked in the description to check them out, as well as a full write-up of the video portraits process. With that all sorted, here's our finished video portrait. Growing up in Tamaki Makoto, contrast has been a constant. Finding balance in a city where the streets meet the sea. And while it can be easy to lose sight or your direction, amongst the bustle and the chaos, it's comforting to know that the dunes and their calm are only a stone's throw away.
I'm Elena, and this is my Auckland. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and learned a tip or two. If you like this video, subscribe to Syrup Lab or join our newsletter. We only send emails once or twice a month, and they're definitely worth getting.